Acute pancreatitis is a self-perpetuating, enzyme-mediated autodigestion of the pancreas, which is a consequence of premature intracellular trypsinogen activation, which causes the release of proteases that digest the pancreas and the surrounding tissue. This is what causes the inflammation, hence pancreatitis. Imagine the pancreas getting smashed, causing all the bad enzymes to ooze out. So, I get smashed is a mnemonic we can all agree on. And of all these causes, gallstones and ethanol abuse are the ones to look out for, which contribute to around 35% each of all the cases of pancreatitis, closely followed by idiopathic causes, which are around 10-30%. to 30%. The typical presentation is with severe constant upper abdominal pain of increasing intensity over 15 to 60 minutes which radiates to the back and the patient will be sitting forward. Nausea and vomiting are common and the patient may also present with shock and abdominal rigidity due to peritonitis. The patient may have bruising around the periumbilical region known as the Cullen sign or on the flanks like when you turn the patient to see the grey bruising, it's grey turner sign on the flanks. The complications are divided into early or late complication based on whether it was within one week or after. Early being shock, acute respiratory distress, real failure, DIC, sepsis, hypocalcemia and a transient glucose increase. And the late being pancreatic necrosis, pseudocyst, abscess, bleeding, thrombosis formation, fistula formation, and even recurrent pancreatitis. When diagnosing the patient, the two things to remember are the serum amylase levels, which will be around three times the normal, and an abdominal ultrasound, which will show pancreatic inflammation. Once we do have our diagnosis, we need to assess the severity and of all the criteria we have, the modified Glasgow criteria is the one we use and a very handy mnemonic is pancreas. Three or more positive factors detected within 48 hours of onset suggest severe pancreatitis and should prompt transfer to ITU or the HDU. When managing, we try to decrease the pancreatic stimulation by keeping the patient NPO and even considering NJ feeding. We give lots of crystalloids until the patient is vitally stable and we monitor the urine flow to more than 30 ml per hour. For the pain, we use pethidine at around 75 to 100 mg's per 4 hours via the muscular route or morphine as an alternative. In daily monitoring, hourly pulse rates, blood pressure, urinary output, full blood count, ABGs, calcium levels, glucose levels, MLAs, and urea and electrolyte are to be monitored. If the patient has progressive jaundice, we need to do an ERCP and remove the gallstones. And when monitoring the progress, we need to repeat a CT abdomen.